What is up everyone? Chris Roma here, aka Roma Aquatics. Today I am going to be putting clipper firmware on the Sunlu S8 Pro. Pretty sure this will work with the Sunlu S8, S8 Plus, pretty much any version of the S8. Um, but I'm not sure. I only have the Pro. So the object is to be basically turning, making this printer print as well as this printer prints. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put the same direct drive on. This is the Micro Swiss um, direct drive, the NG. Um, works very well. Really like it, but I want to, I might try to explore other things. Um, I have the original Micro Swiss on this one and that one with uh, the Stealthy Swiss fad mods on there. Um, so I might try to actually build a reel of Voron head end over here with the Clockwork Extruder and Stealth Burner Fan Shroud. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I haven't decided what tool head I want to put on here yet. This video is about clipper, which is the first step. So on this printer, I've replaced the bed with a PEI bed. I put clipper on it. It has the direct drive and the smart filament sensor. And clipper makes install and the probe. Um, Clipper makes installing all of that stuff so much easier than adding it in Marlin, in my opinion. Um, it's just easy to make tweaks and changes in Clipper without having to reflash your firmware. Um, so, what we're going to need to put Clipper on this guy is you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero uh, W2. So um, Raspberry Pi Zero version 2 with the wireless built in basically is what that means. We're going to need to scan a, a small micro SD card, preferably a class 10 or better. Uh, this is the um, adapter for the micro D SD that came with us on the printer. This is the USB cable that came with the printer. Uh, this is an official Raspberry Pi power supply. I got it on Amazon. And the power supply is very important. You can't just use like a normal phone power supply because this is uh, 0.3 amps. So you need to make sure whatever power supply you get is it definitely at least 0.3 amps going out there. And then um, there's an adapter. Since the Raspberry Pi W only has micro USB input, you need an adapter to use the USB cable that came with the cable or USB cord that came with the printer. Um, you could either get an adapter like I got, or you could actually just buy a whole new cable that has this end on one side and uh, the micro USB on the other, but I decided to go with the adapter in case I ever want to use this with anything else. Um, it'd be more compatible in the future. Uh, but let's get this started. The first step we're going to need to do is go to head over to the computer and uh, get some get some stuff onto this SD card. So here we go to the Fluid Pi website. Uh, just go to Google and hit Fluid Pi in here, and click on Fluid Pi. Uh, click on Download, and it'll bring you over here. I want to go to the Fluid Pi GitHub page and download the Fluid Pi zip file. So now we need software to flash the firmware to the SD card. You can use Win for Windows, you could use Bellina Etcher for Mac and Linux. You could use Raspberry Pi Imager. Even though I have a Mac, I use Bellina because I already have it and used it for flashing other software and it works well. After you download and install Bellina Etcher, you're going to want to open the FluidPi zip file we just downloaded and we are going to flash it to the SD card. Uh, so here I plug the SD card in and it shows up as I click it real fast so that looked kind of weird there but just plug it in it'll show up and then click it and hit select and then you hit flash and here you need permission enter your passwords if you need to do so and it will start flashing decompressing the zip file and flash it to the SD card. After it's done flashing you want to open it up and find the WA supplicant file fluid by this is where we want to enter our Wi-Fi information with our uh, Wi-Fi name and password so that our Raspberry Pi is able to connect to our Wi-Fi networks. So we want to delete those comment hashtags and for that uh, and enter our name for the Wi-Fi name here and the password underneath. Do definitely do not forget to delete the hashtags because that is what makes it a comment and not actual code. So you definitely need to get rid of those.
for the Raspberry Pi to realize that you even made a change to this file. Then you're just going to want to save this file. So back at the printer, we stick our card that we just put our fluid pie on and altered uh, the Wi-Fi so we can now log into there through SSH, which we'll do in a minute. I have the printer hooked up to the adapter that goes to the printer cable to the printer and then the power cord is plugged into the wall. So we go ahead and turn on the power. Gotta turn on the power outlet first. Let me turn on the power and you can go ahead and turn the printer on right now as well. And then we will go back to the computer. So now we're going to want to search for a clipper in Google and pull up the installation documentation uh, for building and flashing. Um, you're going to need a terminal for this. If you have a Mac or a Linux, it just has the terminal. If you have Windows machine, you're going to need to download PuTTY or some sort of SSH uh, uh, software. You're, you might want to watch another YouTube video on that. It's a whole thing in itself, but hopefully you have a Mac or Linux. If you have Windows uh, and need to learn how to use PuTTY, just go ahead and do that. Uh, but right now we're um, SSHing into our FluidPy. You want to do SSH. Pi is the username. FluidPy is the default local host. So you want to SSH Pi at fluidpy.local, and the password is Raspberry, all lowercase. That's the default passwords. So now we're gonna. Now that we're logged in, we're gonna copy and paste. This is gonna change directories into the Clipper directory. And then make menu config will pull up a menu where we need to enter some options all about uh, the MCU and the uh, basically the control board for the S8. So right now everything is basically already as is good to go. All we need to do is make one little change. Hit spacebar and that enters this. Now you hit Q and it'll pull up the quit and you hit Y to save the configuration. Now you're going to be typing make into the terminal and it will build what we need built. Now that that's built, we need to verify that this, the USB port that we're accessing is actually what we think it is. And actually, if you look at the documentation here, the USB 2.0 doesn't show up in what we see. So we do have to make up for that slight change there. But other than that, we look good. So we just have to remember, don't use the copy on the documentation site. We want to copy the actual from the terminal instead here. But we're gonna go ahead and go on to the next steps and just copy and paste the pseudo service clipper stop, which stops clipper from running. We need to enter our password to do this, which is raspberry, all lowercase. Next, we're gonna copy the make flash device equals and then paste that into the terminal and then go back and grab the output from the command above with the serial device up there and we're going to paste that in there. So you want to make sure that matches because that's what you, the Raspberry Pi uses to communicate with the printer and right now we're actually flashing the clipper firmware onto the control board for the printer. So as of this moment Marlin is gone Clipper is now on the printer. We want to restart Clipper so that it works. Now we're going to open the Raspberry Pi configuration to change the password because if we want to in the future open this up for port forwarding to access the printer from anywhere outside of our local network through any network, um, it could be a security risk if we have the Raspberry as the password because it's well known. So we want to go in and change the password and then I'm also going to change the host name because I have lots of printers and they can't all be called FluidPi. Uh, so I'm going to change this one to Sunlu because I already have one called an S8. But you can skip this step if you only plan on having one printer 
uh, fluid probably should be sufficient. Now we're going to go down and we're going to save and exit. So now we're going to want to pull up a browser and enter. You could put fluidply.local if you didn't change your host name. I'm going to put sunblue.local uh, because I changed my son or my host name. And then you can see we get an error here because we do not have a printer configuration file. So we're going to pull that terminal back up and we're going to SSH back into our Pi. I'm going to do sunlu.local because I changed my host name. You're going to do fluidpi.local if you did not change. And that's going to continue throughout the rest of the video. So I'm just going to continue to say sunlu. So now that we're inside the Raspberry Pi, um, on the GitHub for the um, FluidPi, they have sample configuration files provided. So we want to go into Clipper, Config, and there should be a bunch of sample configuration files for us. We want to find the one that's labeled Sunlu S8, and we just want to basically copy the name. <clears throat> and what we're doing here is we're going to copy this example configuration file into the file that we're actually going to use. So CP is the copy. We want to put this path in right here, clipper slash config with the Sunlu name, and we're going to copy that into clipper config uh, slash printer dot CFG. And that's now what the Raspberry Pi is going to use as the default printer's configuration. So now that we have a configuration file, we're going to want to go back to the browser and restart the firmware, restart Clipper. Honestly, I'm not sure really what the difference of these two do, so leave in the comments if you know. I usually just click them both and they seem to do the same thing. But we're going to get a bunch of warnings here because there's not everything in that example configuration that we need. Luckily, I've already been through this and set up in my other S8 Pro, so I know how to work through these. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up my configuration from my other S8 that's already set up, and I'm going to steal the configuration lines from that, which will be posted in the description. Um, I'll try to put it directly in the description if I can. If not, I will post a link to my configuration file on my Google Drive or both. Uh, but this is how you, you pull up your printer configuration. This is my configuration file. There's a lot more in my other one because I have the filament sensors and uh, the probe, which allows for a little bit more like um, automatically bed leveling, um, telling you how much you need to spin uh, each knob um, with the screw tilt adjust functions, um, custom macros, tons of stuff. But right now we just need to put exactly what it's telling us that we need to put. So here it says we need this virtual SD card part. So I'm searching my other uh, file that I already put it in and I'm grabbing it and I'm putting it back. You could either grab that off the screen, pause and type it yourself, or you can copy and paste it in it from the description in the video or the file provided to however I go. Uh, but basically you're going to want to open your printer config for the S8 and scroll all the way to the bottom of the file and we're going to just want to paste that in here. Save and restart and we want to go back and see what else we need. It's going to tell us again in the warnings what else we're missing here. Pause resume. So we're going to search for pause resume in my other config file right underneath it there so we're just going to copy and paste that back into the we're going to find the printer config file paste that back at the bottom here so next clipper allows you to make something called custom macros you could look that up on your own but basically i'm going to add all my custom macros such as cancel print um, m600 for change filaments um, anything custom you want to add. Um, so 
I'm going to copy and paste it from my other S8 into the new S8 file. And again, this will be linked in the description. Now we restart, but we see that we still have some warnings, not errors, but we want to fix these up as well. It's pretty simple. We just have to run a simple script. So we got some errors and some warnings. We want to fix this policy kit. It, fortunately, it tells us exactly how to do it in the documentation. You just need to copy and paste the URL that was provided to us. Go to installation, policy kit permissions. And it tells us exactly what we need to copy and paste. So back to our terminal, we need to SSH back into our Raspberry Pi. If you're not in, change directories into Moonraker script, and we need to run this uh, script for to update the policy. We need to enter our password. If you change the password, this won't be Raspberry anymore. This will be the password that you updated it to. And then we need to restart Moonraker. Unfortunately, uh, most of the time we're still going to get some errors. Some of you will get lucky and you won't, but not errors, warnings. Uh, but we still need to fix these warnings. Um, so we need to go back. And if we go back to the page we were just on with the documentation, it tells us if you still get warnings what to do. So we need to go back to the directory. We're still in there, so we don't really need to do that. And now we just need to copy and paste and run this command. And this will basically just reinstall the dependencies. It forces all the dependencies for it to reinstall uh, manually. Um, so it should fix any of the errors and warnings for any of the packages that we're missing. And hopefully when we hit this reconnect button, we won't see any errors or warnings and we will be good to go on to the next step, which now we need to set up our starting and end code on Cura and actually set up the printer in Cura itself. So here we're going to want to click manage printers and then we're going to want to add a printer. We're going to select a Creality CR10 because it's basically um, CR10 clone, but a little better in my opinion if you ask me. Maybe mine Sunlo, you, Sunlo, you can call it whatever you like. I'm changing it to 310 by 310 by 400. You could also change it to whatever. You could leave it at 300 by 300 by 400 if you'd like. The start G code below is what really matters. Um, so I'm going to grab, again, I've already done this for my other S8, so I'm just going to copy and paste it from that one. I will have the start G code in the description for you as well. So you can just copy and paste it from there. I'm just looking, making sure it pasted right. And G code looks good. Start G code looks good. We're going to hit next. And now if we go back in, the start G code is a little bigger and easier to see. But basically, we can see where we reset the extruder. We hit the heat the bed in the hot end. We probe the bed if we have a probe. And we um, wait for the bed to hot, heat up. And then we draw that uh, purge line down the side. Uh, if you don't have a probe, don't worry about it. Clipper will just say it doesn't recommend, recognize the command because we didn't put it in our printer configuration, but it won't hurt anything. It'll just spit out in the console that it doesn't recognize the command. So now we want to be able to send it to um, our printer without having to use the SD card. So we want to search for Moonraker Kira 
and we will find this GitHub page. There's the installation instructions right here. It's very straightforward, very easy to do. Basically, just follow those instructions. It takes like three minutes, and your Cura will be set up. Um, but right now, we're going to configure our printer to work with Moonraker. So it has this button. After you put that plugin in, you will get that button. That button won't be there before you do that. But after you do uh, copy and paste that plugin into the Kira plugins folder, this button will be here. You can connect to Moonraker, and <coughs> you need the API key to connect to Moonraker. So click it right here, API key, kick that. I'm gonna cancel the video right here and black it out for a minute, because uh, I don't want you to see my API key. So basically you click that, it'll pop up, you copy and paste the API key. It'll actually have a QR code, you don't really need that. Just copy and paste, the, or copy the API key that pops up. And we wanna copy that into the API key here. Um, we also wanted to add the, the URL, which I forgot to do. And we're gonna find out in a minute what happens when you forget to add the proper URL and API key. Um, but for right now, let's go on to slicing. So I went, just went to standard quality and I'm um, gonna change the infill to gyroid because it looks cooler. And we're gonna print this in uh, crystal PLA, which is basically clear. Uh, so we're gonna be able to see the infill. So I want it to be something that looks nice. I'm gonna increase the wall here to make it a little stronger. Um, the material I know that I work with, 190.50 is good for the GST 3D PLA Plus. I'm gonna increase the speed here to 150. Uh, I'm just gonna slow down the travel speed here to 100 instead of two, or 200, 150 instead of 250. And then we're gonna enable acceleration. We're gonna change that to 1500. And we're gonna also enable jerk control. We're also gonna change the initial air acceleration down to 500. Now we can slice it and try to send it to the printer. Here I turn off the plate adhesion. We shouldn't need that as long as we have our bed level. So we want to upload to Sunlube, which should show up now. So I'm going to click start print job and upload here, but we're going to see we have a slight issue. Connecting, connecting, connecting. Does not work. And then I realized we never put the URL in. So, we need to go back to our manage printers, open the connect to Moonraker, and our URL. I'm gonna put sunlu.local here, dot local here. You're gonna put fluidpie.local or whatever you change your host name to. Hit save config, close, slice. And this time when we save and send it, it should work. We are printing. We are, have our Raspberry Pi case. That we're printing here so it doesn't just sit like that and have a nice case for it first layer looks like it's going down pretty nice <laughs> 